to boldly go where no man has gone before. Hello everybody, welcome to another episode of George Reviews. Today on George Reviews, I'll be taking a look at something special, at least special to me, because I got a soft place in my heart for all Star Trek property, and especially the original TV series. And this package in front of us is from Playmate Toys. It is classic Star Trek USS Enterprise NCC-1701, the Constitution class vessel from the classic Star Trek TV show because it said so right on the front of the box. Actual lights and sounds from the original Star Trek TV show. Press here to activate classic sounds. Try me. So let's do that. Fire. Definitely classic goodness right there. It also reads on the front of the box, multiple light up effects, ship and battle sound effects, iconic captain command phrases, display stand. Contains one ship, one display stand, requires three double, triple A batteries included, which is always awesome when they include the batteries. You can see the Starfleet logo right here. And uh, down here it says, again, the classic USS Enterprise, uh, most celebrated spacecraft in history of space exploration, at least fantasy space exploration. The top of the box recaps everything we just went over. Uh, see the bottom of the box, not much there. All right, now for the back of the box, we get um, more specific into where the lights and the sounds come from. Right here, it shows you the uh, display stand, the translucent stand. This is not the actual product shot, it's just like a, a render, a mock up of it. Uh, this may be actually product, at least that's a real human hand or a damn good uh, CGI. And right here, we have a little bit of a bio for. Our Star Trek Enterprise lets you know a little bit about the ship, where it came from, and all of that good stuff. A little bit of Captain Kirk name dropped in there. And this is supposed to be like the pad that they would take down notes on. The yeoman would have walking around. And here's a little barcode. You can scan it with your phone. It takes you to the website. And Q takes you through some of the features on the website right there. So let's take a look, shall we? Specify search parameters. Search mode activated. Starbase 74. I believe my exact words were a dangerous, savage child race. Fits, doesn't it? There were a lot more other features to that. I just wanted to give you guys a little taste of it. But we're going to get on to the unboxing portion of my review. Get this thing open and check out the Enterprise. Curious as to the actual size. Oh, it looks pretty big. Nothing further in the box. And here is the Enterprise and this half a clam piece of plastic. There is some instructions here. Let me just open. Okay, this is the front. I think it just opens up. It just folds it over. And hopefully I shouldn't need instructions. This thing doesn't look that hard. It shows how to put the batteries in there, but it comes already with the batteries. So let's check it out. Let's get the saucer section out of here. Was it one whole piece? Wow. I fully expect. I fully expected this thing to ha for to have to apply stickers to it, but there are stickers already applied, or or they're painted on. All right, this looks like a sticker right here, but the rest of this looks like it's painted on. And to get the two the cells out, yeah, I thought it would be a lot of assembly to this thing, but there is apparently is not. Stand. And out of all of this, this one part is tied down. <laughs> that is crazy. Okay, I'm going to start with the base because I'm going to need a place to put the Enterprise. It's, it's the Starfleet insignia right there, little Starfleet star. And here is 
the connecting point right here. I wish this thing had a little bit of color. I mean, I guess it's supposed to be translucent to make the ship look like it's floating in the air, but it'd be cool to have a little bit of color, some gold on it. All right, I think this is how it goes like that. So let's move on to the Enterprise. And it, like I said, it's mostly a symbol and it's heavy for its size. While I was in the box, it didn't feel very heavy, but this little part right here is pretty heavy. Looks pretty cool. I'm gonna go ahead and put the cells on and then we'll take a closer look at it. Here is the left side in the cell and there's some connecting points right there. And the metal tabs that carry the electronics right there. And no problem putting that on. It feels like it'll come back out if you want to take it back out and store it back in the packaging or whatever. The last thing I want to do is break this thing. Having a little bit of trouble. There we go. Yeah, I didn't want to break it. So here's the Assemble Enterprise. And it looks pretty good. I don't ha currently have an Enterprise in my collection at all, which is weird for me. Because normally I keep one. Uh, at least the movie version or the classic version but I'm happy to have one again and one thing that's kind of spoiling this whole thing immediately for me is, are the screw holes man they could have used a couple little tabs would it have killed them to put a few tabs in here to cover up all of these screw holes and then with something like this a lot of collectors would be tempted to hang it and it would be hanging in the air like this and anybody walked under it would see like all the screw holes well when you turn it like this it looks good the little take on the windows I don't know um I mean you gotta know those are windows to know those are windows otherwise it looks like techie dots turn it around he has some translucent bits back here underneath here is translucent I don't know if that lights up we are going to put it to the test in one second on here, printed on here is the USS Enterprise NCC 1701. Has a few, I guess, running lights up here. We have a yellow, have a red and a green right there. Um, here is the dish, and I'm surprised this thing isn't cut short for safety reason. That looks cool. The deflector dish. It's pretty cool. Not a whole lot to it. Here is the shuttlecraft bay, another uh, painted on light back here, and the warp nacelles has Enterprise on it, and I, I really thought these were stickers, I remember seeing one, I thought this was like a reissue of one that came out a few years ago, but I guess not, side of the nacelle, same thing, so let's get to the lights and sounds, you know what, let's put it on a stand and go from there, and there's a port for the stand right there, it's kind of squared off. I guess so you put it on there properly and this little hole kind of indicates once it's on there it's on there <laughs> so I don't know if I want to really put it on there just yet but here we go try to get it back as far as I can all right turn on the lights a bit let's go for the lights and sounds all right there are some switches underneath here it's on demo it is off and there is on and now we have lights the nacelles light up wow it's cool. I wasn't expecting that. All right, let's go cycle through. Oh, there's lights up here for the bridge and around here. That looks nice. It's just some clear plastic that runs through it. Whatever. And I believe these are the impulse engines if I know my Star Trek. Back here. And also the back of them cells light up. So all the little clear stuff actually lights up, which is cool. Oh, I like that. I really like that. Especially underneath right here. That looks good. So let's cycle through the sound, shall we? All right, pushing the first button just then gets a little phaser action. Let's push it again and see if we get something else. Photon torpedoes. And phasers. Let's go to the second button. Arm photon torpedoes. Yeah, there it is. <laughs> Man battle stations. Photon torpedoes, fire. And that is William Shapner talking, not some um, generator recording. Prepare for warp maneuvers. Security alert to all decks. Arm photon torpedoes. Man battle stations.
I'll be very disappointed if it doesn't make the transporter beaming sound. Looks like I'm very disappointed. How could they not include that? And I'm not sure what that sound is. Is that warp drive? I don't know. I, I, Cause I don't, I don't hear warp drive either. Yeah, I, I think that's the TV version of the warp drive and I, I've just got the movie version stuck in my head from the 80s. And you can angle the neck on, on the display stand. It rotates and, oh wait, no, it doesn't rotate, sorry. It goes up and down. It looks like there's two hinges here. Yeah, there are two hinges to get it up even higher if you want it higher. Right there, but it doesn't rotate. I thought maybe it would rotate. Nope, it doesn't rotate. So this is what you get. And it's made out of all plastic except for a little metal uh, contacts for the sound effects. This thing is pretty cool. I'm thoroughly enjoying it actually. Happy to have an Enterprise back in my collection, especially the original uh, one from the TV show. I kind of wish you could. it was a button to make the lights just stay on. Right, I'm going to try to give this thing the size up and run down in the limited space I have. Here's the Enterprise next to the Master of the Universe Classics figures Wind Raider. And this thing is scaled for a 6 inch figure so it's huge. Here's Star Wars Power of the Force Darth Vader's TIE Advance. Transformers Generation 1 Astro Train. Transformers Masterpiece Sunstorm. Last one, and this is a big one. It is Star Wars The Black Series X-Wing Fighter. All right, there's not a whole lot to talk about here. It's the Enterprise, whether you love it or, or you don't. This thing is very, very cool, especially for the $39.99 price point. Years ago, I missed out on the Diamond Select Enterprise ship collection, and I didn't know about them until after they were out, and um, I saw them at a toy show and found out that the third market price and toy show prices were, like, insane for those. I'm not sure if this is up to that quality, but it's good enough for me. The size and scale is good enough for me. I like the lights and sounds. There are always things that could have been better. I like I wish it made the transporter beam sound. That would have been cool. And I wish a couple of lights blinked on the top of the saucer section. And I really wish you could just leave the lights on until you chose to turn them off. So it could just glow on the shelf in the dark. And that would have been really cool. And again, I picked this thing up at Target maybe like two weeks ago now from the date um, I'm posting this video. And for 40 bucks, totally worth it. I got my money's worth, and it's going to look great on the shelf. So with that, I want to thank everybody for watching another episode of George Reviews. The reviews are every toy has a story, and this story will boldly go where no man has gone before. Mm -hmm.